This drone we are really excited about as from the time of filming this, it is one of the most advanced and small thermal camera drones out there in the market, especially with the specs on paper. But there are a few limitations as it's not a FLIR thermal camera, but a proprietary DJI one. It's still radiometric, which is okay. But also the camera isn't really too much to call home about. Let me explain. So firstly, let's take a look at the specs on a higher level. We've got a HD thermal radiometric camera and the pixels are 640 by 512. More on this later. We have a 48 megapixel RGB camera. We can capture HD and 4K video. There's a 32 times digital zoom and a 16 times thermal zoom. We have a compatible modular accessories. There's five in total that you can use on this drone. We've got a high security protection on this thing, so it's password protected. There's 24 gigs of onboard storage. There's DJI AirSense or ADS-B technology, so you can see other aircrafts in the air. We've got 31 minutes of flight time, 72 kilometers per hour top speed, with a transmission range of up to 10 Ks. DJI mobile SDK support. We have a half of an inch CMOS sensor, and we can create up to 240 waypoints to conduct automated inspections. So there's quite a few features of this little drone, but let's break it down. So firstly, the thermal camera. The dimensions are 640 by 512 pixels at 30 hertz, and is a nine mil lens equivalent, which spits out a R JPEG image. So the R in front of the JPEG stands for radiometric, and we can zoom in 16 times digitally, which is nothing really to call home about, as I said, but you know, it's still a good feature. Right now, the industry standard thermal camera is the X-T2, which is by FLIR, and it comes in several different focal lengths and resolution dimensions and frame rates. But unfortunately, the maximum pixel size you can get is still around 640 by 512. Here is an example. It's not massive, but look, it does the job. So the issue with the current method is although the, the FLIR X-T2 camera is tiny, it does have to go on a mammoth drone like a M200 or the M300. What about search and rescue? So if you need to quickly mobilize, set it up, throw it up in the air and go find someone or a missing cat, it just takes way too long and it's dangerous, it's heavy. And if there's a mid air issue, you're gonna come down very hard with this drone and potentially do some damage. This drone on the other hand, the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance, has the same resolution. It's also radiometric, which means you can determine the temperature variation per pixel and you can get readings of the hot and cold spots in that one image or in a frame. And it's tiny, it's quiet, it literally takes two minutes to set up and throw up in the air. It is a game changer. This is why everyone's very excited about this. The only issue, and the more we are reading into it, this issue is getting a little bit big. All right, so now because DJI is moving away from FLIR and making their own thermal cameras, from a reporting and security point of view, I can guarantee that some companies and industries might not be comfortable with this. Now, most of our clients are using the FLIR image reader software called FLIR Tools, or the new one now, which I think they've renamed to FLIR Thermal Studio, to process, analyze, and report on their thermal images, this software is great. It's a brilliant software. It does things like identify thermal variations, hotspots, cold spots, and most importantly, it's great for reporting. The only other annoying thing is it is Windows only for the moment. Slightly annoying, but look, it's not a big deal breaker. DJI, however, now has their own software for thermal images. It's called the DJI Thermal Analysis Tool, and it's used to analyze and process their JPEGs. Some of the things you can do in this software includes uh, you're able to identify temperature information on the critical areas such as hot spots and cold spots. You can select a certain area where you can measure the hottest part and the coldest part of this frame. You can also change the different color palette options such as white hot, black hot, rainbow, iron red and also good news with the new version now enabling reporting so let's look at the 48 
megapixel digital camera. Wowzers, 48 megapixels on a tiny drone with a half inch sensor, that is big. A large megapixel count for inspections is ideal, especially for desktop zooming. Speaking about the camera, it also records in 4K and can zoom in to a total of 32 times digitally with images. And I guess it can do that with all the megapixels it has. But once again, digital zoom gets to a point where it does start looking like a Picasso water painting or a photo that your mum has just taken on a phone zooming in all the way. It doesn't look great. The so-called lossless zoom when compared to the Mavic 2 zoom is actually horrible and I would not be comfortable handing this over to our clients, especially in the inspections industry. For search and rescue, perhaps, or fire, but not for inspections. The video zoom only works in 1080p mode and allows you to punch in four times, which makes sense as they claim that it has a 4K sensor. But you need to change this to the 1080p settings first and then be able to zoom in. But when recording in 4K, it won't allow you to zoom in. So keep that in mind. So here's another crazy feature. It shoots 360 degree panoramic spheres. First, when I saw this and I saw the specs, I thought, why on earth would they include this? This is more of a creative thing. But then I realized that on many work sites now, virtual reality safety tours is a part of their induction process. So some companies give you a VR headset that you throw on and off you go with your induction. These are created using VR 360 degree panorama images. So now you can execute this using your Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance as well as perhaps carry out your normal inspections. Nice thinking, DJI. All right, so similar to the other Mavic Enterprises, you do have access to the other bolt-on modules like the beacon, loudspeaker to blast your annoying brother, spotlight, we've got smart controller compatibility, and now, this is the big one, an RTK module, which looks like a little helmet or a beluga whale. <laughs> now, if you don't know what RTK is, it's basically a really advanced GPS positioning technology, which will give you a sub-inch accuracy in regards to the drone position, but also the data. Now, having this on a thermal drone means that you can gain super, super accurate and precise waypoint movements with repeat missions, like if you're doing the same assets over and over, or if you're using this for an automated capture for things like mapping or 3D modeling. You can't connect this to an RTK base station though, but you can connect this to an RTK unit, a third party one, but that unit is around 15,000 bucks. So let's just wait to see if there's any more software improvements or if we can pair this up with the DJI RTK base station. Password protection and security. This is also a very nice feature and important when dealing with sensitive data, government projects, or security and surveillance work. So the main difference with this and the normal Mavics is that it's password protected. So if you're using the internal storage on the drone, the only way to access that data is if you put in the right password. So that way, if the drone goes flying or you lose control and it gets into the wrong hands, they cannot physically get that data out of the hard drives in the drone. And on that note, the drone now has 24 gigs of onboard storage, which is more than enough unless you're shooting 4K. Either way, it's a really nice touch and one less thing to remember to take with you. Okay, so for which industries and applications could you use this drone for? There are so many. The most obvious is, I think, search and rescue. So the ability to get the drone out, set up quickly, and mobilize with minimal effort and with that kind of range, it's a no-brainer. So for first responders, having the zoom does help and the ability to adjust the temperature range is a huge benefit. So if you're looking for a lost person, you can set the temperature range to that of the human body. Or on the same note, you can also look out for warm-blooded uh, animals. So if you're in the environmental protection or in biology, I know here in Australia, we're using drones to count koalas especially as they are endangered right now. You can also use this for roof and solar panel inspections too. You could carry out a high res 2D thermal map or a single basic flyover of panels. And this will not only give you temperature variations in real time, but you'll also be able to identify which panel is busted. 
Then we also have flare stacks to be able to measure the temperature of the stack whilst in operation without the need to shut down the whole facility is a huge cost saving. Uh, we've got pipelines so you can, you can identify heat through pressure leaks. Um, this can be picked up very easily with a radiometric thermal camera. We've got the firefighting industry, you'll be able to see through smoke and for night operations. So then we've got the electrical industry, so power lines and that kind of stuff. The RTK module will lock that drone hard into position and it will not move, keeping it super, super steady and safe without getting too close to the conductors. The zoom also is quite handy as working in the power line industry, there's a thing called SAD or safe approach distance, which means you must maintain the distance of let's say three to five meters away from the conductor. So, so having that RTK module on top of the drone will just lock that drone into position and it won't move at all. Now there's plenty of other applications that can be used with this drone. These are just to name a few. The bottom line is that this industry has been waiting for a small, lightweight, efficient, radiometric thermal drone, and here it is. It's an exciting time ahead. I'm really looking forward to seeing more improvements and advances in the software. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. There'll be more videos coming out shortly. And also don't forget to check out our inspections course at dronemasterclassacademy.com. I'll see you guys in the next one.